Hey, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and I'm continuing my struggle against the uh, CC Bot by Rising Sun Studios, playing this game of Combat Commander. We're just in the beginning of uh, round four. Um, so one of the problems with uh, playing a game, doing a demo for all the world to see, and for me to record, is that I get to see the mistakes I make. And... Um, Obviously, some of you have caught them, and that's great too. Some of them I caught in the production of the last, the last video, turns two and three, and I had noted that, that that they would be corrected in this, in this video. And I just want to go over those <clears throat> real quick. Uh, you may remember, obviously, if you're watching this one, you probably did watch the uh, the previous video, but uh, you'll remember that uh, I had a uh, had a squad here that survived a battle. Uh, he was broken, and I said he survived, even though he actually didn't. His, his defense roll was less than the attack roll. So he was just sitting there, and that was fine. It really did not come into play and affect anything. The Germans never attacked him. He never attacked in those two rounds outside of that. So he never really did anything except in, in my last turn, before the last time trigger of round three. Um, so... Sergeant White's uh, uh, recovery roll, uh, rally roll, um, did the time trigger, so that was no big deal. I reshuffled my deck um, and uh, resolved all that and got everything going, and then did that squad's rally roll, which he succeeded. <laughs> and But during the success of that, an event happened. The event was to break a unit in a random hex, or closest to a random hex. So when we did that, uh, we drew the card, 06 came up, and this was the closest unit, and so he was broken. He was already suppressed from battle, but he got broken. So um, I basically rolled all that back. So fortunately, taking him out of the play didn't, again, nothing happened with him. He was, you know, nothing, he played no major part in anything after staying on the board, except he just kind of laid there dying for a long time, I guess. Um, so what I did was, because all that happened on the first draws of uh, that new round, I basically just discarded all the cards that I had drawn, all the cards that I had played, reshuffled my deck, had that there, brought back my route card that I had played, because I actually did try to play a route card um, to route that unit, and send them back, it all failed. So that was that was meaningless. But anyway, the net result is I roll all those cards back. Uh, I put those cards, I brought him, brought this card back to me. So this would have been my last two cards. I couldn't couldn't play another card, um, even though I had another action available to me. I didn't have anything I could play. And then I drew two new cards. This, after I shuffled, I got recover and fire. So that's where my hand stands. Uh, and and uh, still the AI's turn to start. Um, so that unit has been removed from play. And two points have been awarded towards the allies, so I mean towards the axis, so it shifted back two points in his direction. Uh, my unused weapon is still sitting there. Uh, we are, like I said, in turn four now. Um, got two more to go before sudden death roll. Um, and then what else happened? Let's see. Um, during this long run here at the end, this unit was able to... Uh, uh, these units were all able to move, and um, at one point he got an action, and now I can't remember what, which action he got. He successfully triggered an action, got it, um, and I forgot to discard a card. So um, to make it fair and for propriety's sake, considering that some of these uh, some of these cards are going to matter in terms of time triggers, just like in, the, in a regular game, uh, I discarded the top card, uh, which would have been a Five three, uh, which would have actually given him a route order, um, but I, I dis discarded the top card and drew another card. So now that's all back in sync, the way it should be, and that is it. So those are the corrections that I made. Unfortunately, <laughs> so that, I guess the other good thing about watching a video of yourself playing is that you can actually uh, determine what the problems were. And how to how to fix them, and if, and if any difficulties uh, uh, 
if there's any, anything that can't be undone. And in this case, fortunately, everything was able to be undone. So with all that said, um, and one other thing I'm, uh, uh, a viewer mentioned, um, and I may have just misspoke, when I'm calculating on the pack howitzer, you count the you count the hex as the distance to the target, and I did that. I said it was nine, and uh, when I drew, I think I said he needs a nine or greater. Multiplying is actually he needs greater than a nine. So the, when I did the draw, it was a four and a four, so it was a sixteen. So he he still made it. I just I misspoke and said uh, I need a nine or greater, and actually needed greater than the distance. So. Again, as I said in the beginning, I'm not teaching you how to play combat commander. So those kind of mistakes, you know, are mine. So anyway, so with all that said, let us resume with the AI's first turn in round four. All right, so he gets a six. Success. Track three. Oh, look at that, he gets the route anyway. All right, so he's going to play a route order um, on me, and he's going to try to route this guy, Sergeant White, who is at a nine on his morale. So here we go, and he's higher than a nine, and he got a ten. So with that said, I have to retreat one hex toward my side of the board, so I can I can go here or here. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter. I'll get behind these. Tr what is his range when he's broken? He's only a one. Oh, it's driving him away from being able to issue orders here. All right, well, I'll just put him back there. We still have the control because nobody else has been in there. And that is the first action. All right, so we discard that. Go for action number two. It's a five, so he does, he is successful. Track three again is a recovery, so we'll discard that. And all he's gonna benefit is taking these suppression markers off of these two units. And then he has no recovery rolls anywhere that he needs to make. All right, so put those back in our little tray. And his turn is done, he's taken his two actions. And we reset. Draw two cards. And come back over to me. All right, so now <laughs> um, there's no point in doing a route. There's no point in doing a route. Um, I guess I do want to do a recover. Boy, this is where it gets tough when you don't have a move order. I can do a recover and try to get my get Sergeant White back in play, but he's... He's uh, nowhere near anybody, so he won't be able to move, but I'll at least get him back into, into play. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll, I guess I'll do that. I'll only get one card out of this, so I'm gonna have to play recover order on myself. Okay, and uh, he is a nine on his, uh, on his morale. So we need a little less than a nine. And we got an eight, perfect. So he has recovered his rally roll, successful. And that, um, yeah, because if you remember, these guys now have no line of sight to anybody, but they're still holding firm because they're gonna guard this control point. Um, I could burn a fire order. Actually, I think we will, because we've got the hand grenades. I can get rid of that card, too. Yes, 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 yes. All right, so I'm going to activate this this unit to fire. And let's look at the rules here again on that satchel charge, which is actually a pen, captured Panzer Faust. Make sure I'm playing that right. So the two satchel charges represent captured German Panzerfaust. They cannot make an attack on any hex with a cover less than two. Less than two. So, he can attack this guy. He could attack here and try to take out that leader, but his, his attack is not very good right now. Um, 
yeah, so we're going to go ahead and activate this unit who is carrying this weapon. So he'll get an attack and he'll get a, and the and the weapon gets a separate attack because they can't be part of a group. But that's that's good. Yeah, 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 that's good. Good, 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 good. Okay, and the Panzerfaust has to attack. Cannot tag into any attack on any hex with a cover less than two. And I don't know why that's like that. I guess because they have, you have to be hitting something uh, in cover. But uh, we will see. So, all right, so he's going to activate. I'm going to play that fire order. So let's put that away. All right, so I've played, I've played a fire order. That's before we screw up. Let's check. I play a fire order. They can use concealment. Um, okay, so the satchel charge is going to attack into there. The Panzerfaust is going to attack into the wooded hex there. So it is a 12, uh, it's a one range. So we do need greater than a one on the targeting roll. So we'll go for that first, and we get a four times one is a four. So that is successful. So he's hit, and now he's going to do a 12 attack. Um, with the assistance of hand grenades. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and fire that in there. So we now have a 14 attack. So um, he's going to try for the... He's going to try, I'm playing a fire order, so we're going to see if he gets, he gets, he needs a two. He does get a two, and it's a four. So the four says he can do hidden entrenchments. If he's the defender, he is not. So he did not get the uh, concealment option. So it is now a 12 plus a two. It's a 14 plus, oh, good thing I played it. 14 plus three is a 17. All right, attack is a 17 on this SS unit who is at an 8 plus a 2 for his cover is a 10 low number low number low number oh and a 3 it is a 3 all right so he is about to break so again the unit is about to friendly squad would break he can try for a light wounds so he needs a 2 he got a 6 so he has to try for that, and now he needs for a light wounds, he needs a five or greater on the white die, and he got a four. So we did not get light wounds. So this unit here is now going to break. So that was good. This weapon has been used and is no longer part of the game. So I'll put it back into my allied squad box. Force box, I call them. All right. So the weapon is attacked. That has done what it needs to do. And now he is going to attack, and he's just going to attack here. Um. Yeah, his range is four, so he can't use spray fire. That would be awesome, but they don't. They do not, so he's not going to do that. So he's going to attack into here. Oh, you know what? That would have been a plus one as well because it was downhill. So anyway, still made it. All right, so we're at a three plus a one downhill plus our attack roll is a six. So a four plus a six is a ten into this hex. So he's going to defend, he'll defend first. So he is a 8 plus a 2 is a 10. Draw anyway, and he gets 15, so he's fine, and he is just a straight up 8. And 3 is 11, so he, said he was successful. He avoided the hit as well. So that all of that. Into my turn. I have one card left, so I'm going to drop three this time. And we've got a move order. Good, need that. 
And a route. Don't need that. Oh, actually, we could use that now. And command confusion. Ugh. Cluttering my hand now. Back at a two, as usual. Gets the two, goes to track three. He's going to do a recover. All right, and now he does have a recover. He has nobody that is suppressed. So no suppression markers get removed, but he's going to try to recover. He is a morale of 10 plus a 2 for his cover is a 12. So only a time card will suppress him. Everything else will rally him. Oh, it's pretty close there with the 11. But all that attack went for naught because he just recovered himself. So that was his first action. Second action, again, needs a 2. And he got a 4, and he's going to operate on track 6. Track six is fire order. Somebody's in trouble. And I wonder who. All right, so I think the obvious thing is we're gonna activate Sergeant Gans here. Who lost their light machine gun on the way? Somebody did, I think it was this SS. All right, so they all have line of sight into this hex and range. So he is issuing a fire order and it is a special fire order. So because of that, Bot plays a special fire order. I get to choose which one he's going to use. All right. So um, target is adjacent. All right. So here's the choices, and some of these apply. The boar sighting he can't use because he's not the Serenario defender. Crossfire, the requirement is opfire, so that's not here. Because that's for moving, I think I'm a moving target. Hand grenades is the target is adjacent. So if we attack that hex, then the target is adjacent. Just one of the firing units has to be adjacent, so that would work. And then we give a plus two. Spray fire would allow. Um, would allow both of these units to get attacked by the same attack. One firing roll into the same target. Sustained fire if a machine gun or mortar is firing. Or marksmanship if the bop is German. So I've got to look up sustained fire and marksmanship. Right. So marksmanship can be played just prior to the fire attack roll. The attack must include a firing squad, a team of the indicated nationality. That's fine. Um, and that gives them a plus two. Obviously hand grenades gives a plus two. And sustained fire gives you a plus two, but there's a risk of the uh, machine, one of the machine guns being broken. So I think hand grenades is probably the safest route. And then the other option is, as we mentioned, um, spray fire. Uh, all firing pieces must have boxed range. The two targeted hexes must each be within range, be adjacent, contain an enemy unit. So, that said, I do not know which is the best one to do. What would the best one to do be? Trying to take out the one unit. Or try to hit them both with one fire order. So I think because we have a fire group, we have the option here to, um, we would have, if we activate all of these, we have a, we would have a six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We already have a 12 without the plus two. I think trying for the spray fire gives us a much better 
chance, although we do have those foxholes, but they're only at a nine. So we're at a 12 plus a roll versus a nine plus a defense roll. So, well, let's see. So first and foremost, we gotta see if he gets it. This may have all been moot if he doesn't get it. So he needs a two and he gets a three, all right? So now I gotta pick. So spray fire, the chances of four plus. Hand grenades is a four plus. Sustained fire and marksmanship are both five plus, and I think they have too much risk. So it's a choice between these two. So, you know, we'll go with a die roll. One through three is hand grenades, and four, five, or six will be spray fire. So we're gonna go for hand grenades. We chose which one we were going for. They're both a four plus, so now, we're going for hand grenades. We need a four plus on the white die. Again, this may have all been moot. And it's a two. So he doesn't get the hand grenades anyway. This was all a waste of time. Jeepers. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So anyway, now we're to 12. Minus one for uphill is an 11 attack on this one hex. So here we go. 11 plus nine is a 20. So still a pretty good attack on that one hex. So the attack total is a 20. Slide it over, and now my guy here is at a nine. He needs an 11 to not die. Use my concealment, use my spray fire. Spray fire is our attack, can't do anything with that. I could use concealment, but I have no cover anyway, so it's, it's regardless. So I'm at a six plus a three is a nine. Nine plus, give us a time roll. Oh, look at that! <laughs> we have a time roll. Uh, nine plus 12 is 21. And that little dog survived. <laughs> and we're about to reset. Oh my goodness gracious for the next round. <laughs> Okay, so we're back after the time marker has now been moved into uh, position number five, round number five. Shuffled my deck. Um, gave myself one victory point as the scenario defender. Uh, no, Again, no smoke markers. No more smoke markers have been on the board, so nothing to remove there. I have no opportunity to play a dig in, so now we're going to see if the AI gets a dig in action. They're still at a two, and they got a one, so they did not get a dig in action. So, with that said, that lucky dog, wow, wow, that's awesome. That was just, that was pretty amazing, actually. And it's good for me, because i got the time moving up. Anyway. Okay, so, that massive power attack there just did nothing. That's pretty darn amazing. Pretty darn amazing. So, all right. He is, that was his second order? Yeah. Yeah, that was his second order. I forgot to move it, so we'll reset, draw two new cards. Boom. And come back to me. Make sure I did everything right on the time. Yeah, so we got our points. We shovel to the deck. And gain my victory point, and that was it. So now I'm ready for sudden death and to win the game here. So, uh, right, what am I gonna do here? I that guy healed, that guy rallied, so he's I have no reason to play a route card. I've got two of those clogging my hands. Um, I do not have, um, Oh, I did get, uh, I'm sorry, I did get an extra unit, and then again, and I brought him on the board, and now I've got a traffic log going here because of my uh, lack of move orders and no leader there. I expected these guys to come out a little more slowly. So I could I could just burn one move order and just get one of those guys up into play, or I could take this opportunity to get rid of some of these cards and maybe try to get something better. Or I could activate him to move and get him in play where he can now activate these guys to do something. Um, 
either way, it's like I'm going to do one thing and that's going to be it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just discard right now because they're going to they're going to attack him probably. They got a fire order anyway, so it may make my decision easier. I'm going to discard three and draw three. Command confusion again. Discarded it to get it again. Fire order. I needed that. That's good news. And artillery request. Useless. But that's cool. Hidden entrenchments is there. So uh, I can place foxholes somewhere else. That'll be helpful. Maybe. All right. But I discard due to passing. We'll get to see if he has demolitions or a hidden unit. So again, he's still on a two. And he got a two and a four. And that gives him hidden unit. He's scenario defender. He's not scenario defender, so that does him no good. Okay, back to the AI. Again, say it again. He needs a two. And he got a five. So that moves forward. And track five moves forward. And track five goes to there, which is a move, an advanced move order. All right, so this is going to be pretty easy because well, let's discard that like we're supposed to. Uh, these guys can't move. I mean, they can they can move some and get a little you know surround, but they need to get to here. Um, so I think we're going to activate this unit here to move, and that'll work good. So this leader. Lauerbach is going to activate these two guys and we will now um, uh, we will move them. So he has five movement points and he's really not in danger of coming under any anybody's view. So he will move one, two, three, four, five. That gets him up there. Now this, he's activating with the leader, so they're going to move together. So the uh, weapons team here, I think it's a weapons team, right? Yeah, the weapon team here has, um, has a four movement minus one is a three plus a one, so they got their four. So this group here can move four. Um, and I did not plan this through very well, did I? One, yeah, well, they'll just move here. So... One, two, three, and they will stop there because they have to move together the whole way, and that's fine. That keeps them together. All right, so they've already activated to move. So that was first order. Second order needs a two. Got a one, so it's no order. So this now drops down to the lowest space, which is still a two anyway. This resets. This discards. Draw two. And back to me. Still stuck with crud here again, although I do get sustained fire, but uh, I don't have any machine. I've got the one machine gun on the board. Um, I'm going to go ahead and activate to move. I'm just going to go ahead and move Sergeant White back into the mix so he can, he can regain command of his troops. So... All right, so Sergeant White's going to activate to move. It's a card, and he can move six, but he's just going to move up the hill, which is a plus one. So that makes it a two of his movement. And so technically they have a chance to op fire, so we'll give him that chance. Uh, I played a move. Um, these don't, these aren't relevant, so they won't come into play. Uh, if he gets a two, he'll get a chance at an op fire. And as the attacker, he needs a six plus. So first thing he needs is a two. He, did get it, he got it with a four. So now he needs a six or greater on the white die. And he got a one, so he did not get an op fire. So there we go. Um, and I'll draw one card.
hidden unit. When your opponent discards one or more cards, roll on the American support table. Select one available unit, place it in a setup hex with no units, and at least one cover. Well, that'll be helpful. Unfortunately, the AI never discards. So that's not good. That never, that'll never help me, so that's a useless card for me now. It's just clogging my hand. All right, my turn's over. Back to the AI. I need the two. Got a five, so that's good. He's going to move on track six. Track six goes here as a route. And I have nobody that can be routed, so this does nothing, and he just has another order. Normally, because he didn't get an order, this would drop down, but he can't. Uh, so he got a six, so he passed the check, and he's going to advance on track three. Track three is a recover order, and again, he just had a wasted turn, because he cannot do a recover. He has no way to recover. So again, nothing there. This resets, and his turn is over. Draw two more cards. Well, since nothing much was happening there, I'm going to try to get something better. Since he did nothing, I'm just going to take advantage of the fact that he did nothing... And I'm going to discard three. And hope he doesn't get darn reinforcements. Fire. Oh, good, good, good. Fire. Recover. That'll come in handy. And route. Hopefully those will both come in handy. All right. On to the AI. Now, I discarded. So he's got a chance here. Uh, needs a two to see if he gets it. It's a one again. He doesn't get it. It's amazing. All right, so he didn't have the card that he needed at the time he needed it. AI turn. He got a four, so he got it. He moves on track one, which is an artillery request, which does him no good. And so he just goes for the next order. It's a five, so he survived that. He's on track two, which is here. He now has a move, a special move order. So on a special move, he can do assault fire or smoke grenades. So he needs a two. He got a two and he got a two. So two on here is he does have the smoke grenades if he gets a five plus on the white die. And he got a five. So he does get to play the smoke grenades. So this finally resets. Yay. All right, uh, he just had some bad, bad draws there. So smoke grenades are used only by a unit with boxed movement and must be played while that unit is activated to move. Effect select one smoke marker at random, place it in an adjacent, in or adjacent to that unit's hex, provided the hex is not water or already contains a blaze. Okay. Uh, while the unit is activated to move. While the unit is activated to move. And must have boxed movement. So we can activate them to move, which is good. And while they're activated to move, they will be able to, uh, um, at any point, um, put, the smoke, put the smoke marker down. So I can activate them. They can get into those trees. They're going to face that machine gun. Because I do have op fire coming. Um, I can activate him. They have box movement. And I can activate just this one guy to get closer and try to come into here. Or get to where possibly they could assault. Could get into assault distance. Because right now he really only has one one cover. Um But they're in a good position to fire right now, and these guys have got to get up there, and time is running out. So I think this group is going to activate to move, and the, the unit that has the um, box firepower is the one that can place the smoke hex. The smoke. All right, so they're all going to activate to move. So he's going to move first. He's got five. So he is going to move into here. And boom, right there he's moved, and that's two. So I am going to activate this group here, or this, yeah, this group here for opportunity fire. That unit there. So uh, I will play 
They're both smoke grenades, so I'll just play this one. And the machine gun is now activated for opportunity fire. And the 50 cal is going to take a shot at him first and foremost before he gets to do anything. He's moved. This, this has to be resolved first. So he is a 9 plus 2 is an 11. Yeah. Is an 11 firepower. So an 11 plus a 8 is a 19. All right. Now he is a this was not a fire order this is a fire action so he does not get the opportunity to um, for concealment or anything like that we determined that last time so he is an eight plus a two is a ten going against a nineteen and he gets a ten plus a nine he gets a nineteen so that is a suppression marker He had five movement, and he moved two. He was at three, so he was. F he moved two, so he had three left. Now he's got two left. So, but the net result is he is that that fire attack happened. That that the machine gun is still available. Now he is going to drop his uh, smoke marker. He's going to use his smoke grenades right now, and put him in this hex H two. So we're going to draw. At random, and we get a smoke X and H two. And remember, these are you can download these on the website onceuponagame.com. There's a link in the video for you to find this as well. Uh, and he gets a five hindrance, so that'll help these guys move. And he's going to stay put. Okay, so now this unit has, uh, because of the leadership, they have four movement if they move together. So, um, so they're just going to both move into this hex, and that is a five hindrance. So firepower, if he wants to take the uh, take the shot. Um, into, out of, and through. Um, well, let's see. That's, that's one, two, three. They're going to go ahead and move closer. No, they want the cover. They want the cover because they can shoot now. So, all right, so we have a nine plus a two is an 11. Minus a five hindrance is a six firepower plus the die roll is an event. Six plus seven is 13 attack. And the event is malfunction. Break the unbroken weapon closest to a random hex. Yeah, that was event, so it wasn't doubles. Okay, random hex, F6. That's not gonna be good. Here is F6. The wep, oh, no, it's good for us. Let's see, the weapon closest, this weapon F6. This weapon here is one, two, three, four, five. This weapon here is one, two, three, four, five, four. This weapon is broken. So we broke that weapon there. Good news. Yeah, because that one was too far away. It's close. F6. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that was further away too. Okay. Okay, so the attack total, back to the back to the battle. The attack total on that opportunity fire was a 13. And uh, we're going to let this guy defend first. He is an eight plus a one for Lieutenant Lauerbach. He is a nine plus a two is an 11. 11, he made it. And uh, Lieutenant Lauerbach is himself a nine plus two is an 11. And we got an event, his seven, he made it after the event. His event is hero. If not already in play, place the German hero in a friendly hex. Rally up to one broken unit there. Wow. 
and the time trigger okay, it, it doesn't doesn't apply so don't get me wrong we're only looking at the the event but that was one time trigger out of the way okay so the hero let's let's pull our box down here and there is our hero Dietl, hero of the reich get him out of the box here have to get the tweezers my fingers are kind of big. So there we go. We got needle. Put our force box back. All right. There are no broken units. So where do we want to put Deedle? Hero of the Reich. He's a two firepower, four range, seven movement. Um, a friendly hex. So it's got to be a hex that is currently with us and then I think we'll put him we'll put him in here gives him cover and there's nothing to rally if there had been a unit to rally I would have put him there so their hero is in play so there we go all right so I believe that that unit is done moving they could move one more closer while that smoke is there. Um, but I don't think they're going to, because that machine gun's pretty deadly. And they are gonna have to get up there pretty quick. So, um, so that's the end of the AI's turn. Reset, draw two. And I spent one of my fire cards. Well, it worked out really well, so. Um, which I think I'm gonna do again here. Uh, I cannot recover, and I cannot route, but I may be able to route after I fire. Maybe we're going to issue the fire order. And we're going to issue the fire order to this tank group up here. So, I'm going to activate Bueller, and the 50 cal, and the, uh, well, he doesn't have any range to add to it, so the 50 cal and the pack howitzer are both going to activate to fire. So, I think I'm gonna leave them sitting tight for now. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna activate this group to fire. That's what I'm gonna do. So, uh, this unit's gonna attack first. He's gonna attack into this hex. He is going to play the hand grenades. I did play a fire order, so I've got to give him a chance um, because I did actually play a fire order, so he can use the concealment. Um, Concealment does not apply here because he has no cover. So we're going to attack that hex first. We'll save that check for when I'm attacking somebody that can use concealment. So here we go. Um, it is a three. We are going to use our hand grenades. So it's a plus two. So he's a three. Plus two is a five. Plus one downhill going into this hex is a six. Six plus our attack roll is... Oh, nice. Sixteen. That's good as could be expected for this this weak little guy here. So we have a 16 going into this hex. So we let the, um, you always want to do the leader last. So we have an 8 plus 2 is a 10. No cover bonus. So we have a 10 plus a, we need low rolls here. 10 plus, oops, 6, so he's suppressed. So we'll throw a suppression marker on this unit, like that. Okay, and now Sergeant Gans is a straight up eight, going against a 16. And Sergeant Gans gets, oh, gets only gets a five, so he's a 13, so he is going to break. So the squad is gonna break, the leader's gonna break. So now the leader is breaking. Because there's nothing you can do about it, dude. Fix all this stuff here. All right, so he's suppressed and he is broken. So that was very helpful. Awesome sauce. All right, so that was his fire. So we did play the fire order. We did play the bonus hand grenades. All right, well, he'll go ahead and take his shot at it. He only gets, he didn't get the plus two. He just has a three uh, plus the one for firing down. No, wait a minute. 
Yeah, he can still fire another. So he gets a three plus one for downhill is a four. Four plus six is a ten. So it's not a good roll at all. All right, so no bonus. Eight. He's at a seven, and he gets no leadership bonus. This might actually be good if we can get low rolls. Seven plus a. Oh, time trigger. Do, do, do. So he defended because he was at a seven plus a 12 is a 19 against a 10. So he did defend, but we now have to reset and we're going into turn number six. Okay, so we move the time trigger up into space six, which means we hit the sudden death marker. Um, I the, So the first thing that happens is, is the Germans were the triggering player. So we have reshuffled the deck and now we have to do the sudden death check, which means we're currently at turn six. So we're gonna draw this die. If it is less than six total, the game ends now. It'll be over and the allies will win. If it is six or higher, the game goes another round until the next time. So survey says six. <laughs> Skin of our teeth, we continue to a new round. So we follow the rest of the uh, time procedure. Um, the defender gains one victory point. That's that's me, so I don't get a victory point. Uh, tree and player only must remove any smoke marker from the map. So this is not good. He's just lost his cover completely. So that smoke comes back off the map. Now he is wide open. Unfortunately, I've already taken my second action. So, um, oh no, didn't I didn't. There are no units on the space that need to advance, and now both players must play dig-in actions. I do not have a dig-in option. The AI needs a six to get a dig-in. He does not even get a chance, so that is discarded. And now we are still actually in attack mode. So this, this actual turn is not over yet. So uh, we had a 10 attack total. He rolled the 12, so he survived with a 19. So he survived. He is not defended yet. He is at a 9 against a 10. So we still have to draw for his defense roll. And he got it clearly with an 11. So he is in good shape. Okay, so I still have another play because I had to had to refresh my memory here. I started with three cards because I had done an opportunity fire on the AI's turn, and then I used the uh, recover uh, for the hand grenades. So uh, I played the fire order, and so now I do have an opportunity to route, and I will go ahead and do that. And I'm going to route, obviously, the enemy. So the only one who can route is our dear friend Sergeant Gans, and he is at a nine for his uh, his morale. So I need higher than a nine. Oh, got an 11. That's awesome. So he is now going to abandon his peeps. And uh, I'm just going to... I need to go back two because there's an 11. So I'm going to back him up into this building here. So at least he's got some cover and still maintains the control. Okay. So I am out of cards and I'm out of actions. So um, it is my turn to draw four. Artillery request, useless. Fire action, not useless. Fire, not useless. Move, not useless. So good, good shape. All right, so things are kind of heating up here and we will continue this in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this far. Uh, leave your comments and suggestions uh, below, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!